Are you still stuck on a low TikTok following because you simply don't know how to make good TikTok edits? Well, don't worry, because today I will show you step by step how you can make an edit that looks just like this. I fought your cousin once. In the future. He is fast. I'm faster. Make sure to stick till the end because I'm also gonna be revealing some of my secrets that I use to boost my TikToks to the next level. Before we start, we wanna make sure that we use the right composition settings. So we're gonna right click, open our composition settings and make sure that you're using my exact resolution and also make sure to put your frame rate to 60 fps this is really important because if your edits are 60 fps they're gonna look the best and really smooth once that's done press ok and we can start editing to start basically all you need is a clip and a song i already went out of my way and got both of them so you don't have to wait what we want to do first is mark our beats so we know exactly when our clips are supposed to change. To do that, make sure to disable the audio from your intro clip. Now what you want to do is right click on your sound, go to keyframe assistant and convert audio into keyframes. This should open up a new layer and now when you press U on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes and select both channels, open the graph editor, you should see these spikes in your graph. Every time there's a spark, you know that there's a beat drop. Now we're gonna zoom in to see it a bit more clear. And as you can see, every time there's a spark, you're gonna mark a beat drop. You're gonna do that by heading to the right and pressing this little marker button. And every time where your current frame, it's gonna mark a beat. So we can go ahead and do that for every beat. So once you're done marking all the beats, your timeline should look something like this. You should have loads of markers. And now we can close the graph editor again and delete the layer that we just created because we don't need it anymore after marking the beats. Now just make sure to listen along to the audio one more time to make sure that you actually hit all the beats and didn't miss anything. Once you've made sure that there's no mistakes, it's now time to add your scenes. If you need a scene packs, you can go to my Instagram account, the link's in the description and you can get scene packs. I have loads of scene packs from different characters on there. Make sure to check it out. To now search out clips from your scene pack, just double click on the layer and it should open up a completely new window. And now every time you can move this little marker throughout the scene pack and then when you see a scene that you want to have, you're going to go ahead and press this little bracket to go to that exact place and now you can just move your marker on the timeline ahead to the next speed drop and then cut it right here by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. Then just double click again on the long layer and then do it throughout your whole scene pack to find your clips. Now once you've done that, the last thing before we start the editing is gonna make sure that all the clips are centered and you can see the character's face in the shot because for this one it worked, but there's gonna be certain shots exactly right here where the face is not in the middle of the screen. So just drag your clip so it fits the middle. Now we can go ahead and pre-compose all the clips. To do that, just select the clip that you wanna pre-compose and press Ctrl, Shift and C at the same time. Now. This window should open and make sure to choose the bottom option and also enable this check mark. Press OK and do that for all the clips. Now before we add any effects to the clips, we're gonna first of all edit the intro because the intro is the most important part of the edit because viewers are gonna, when watching your edit, see the intro first and then decide whether they're gonna watch till the end or if they're just gonna skip. So if I play my intro right now, you're gonna notice that it needs a lot of work. I fought your cousin once, in the future. He is fast. I'm faster. As you can see, the audio levels are not matched at all and you can barely hear the character speaking and the music is way too loud. So we're going to fix that first. To do that, we're going to go to our music layer, press L on our keyboard to bring up the audio levels, set a keyframe at the very beginning and put it to, in my case, negative 22. Then we're going to go to the marker where the beat drops, which we marked earlier, which is the end of the intro right here. And we're going to put it to zero, just like that. Now zoom out again. Select both of the keyframes and we're going to easy ease them, which basically means we're going to add a graph to it to make it look smoother. To do that, we're going to select both of them, right click, keyframe assistant and easy ease. Now we can open the graph editor. And as you can see, this is the standard easy ease graph, but we're going to change it. We're going to drag it just about here. Make sure that you drag both audio levels, obviously, otherwise you're just going to have it on one ear and then the other one is going to play. We're going to do it like this. Now close the graph editor again and if you listen to it now, the music should be way quieter in the time where the character is speaking. I fought your cousin once. In the future. He is fast. I'm faster. I fought your...
Now what we want to fix next is these small glitches that you see every time a scene switches. This is basically just due to the frame blending that we activated earlier because it can't handle these quick scene switches. So we're going to go ahead and every time there's a frame where your clip is glitched, we're just going to cut it out. So go to the first frame where it glitches, which is here. We're going to cut our layer by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. Then for the duration of the glitch happening, which is till here, we're going to set another cut. And for this isolated layer, we're now going to disable frame blending. And this we're going to do for every time where our intro cuts. Now, once we've done that for every time where the scene switches, it should look something like this. And now we're going to add our text. To add the text, we're basically going to head to the top row and you can see the text symbol right here. We're going to click it. And by then clicking again on our screen, we're going to create a text and now just fill in whatever your character or your characters are saying. But as you can see, it unfortunately doesn't fit into the composition. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it into two lines. To do that, just select after the sec um, For me, it's going to be the second word. And I'm just going to press enter. And then it should be one row below the other text. And it should be fixed and it should fit into the frame. Now also just head to the right, open your align panel and align it to the center so it looks more clear and you can visually track what you're doing. Now the next thing that we want to do is we're going to adjust how our text looks because as you can see right now, the one text is cutting into the other one. Fix that, just select your whole text, open the character panel on the right and we're going to adjust the size between each line. So this is this value right here, we're just going to put it up a bit. So now as you can see the text moved down and there's now enough space. What you also can change is the character size right here. I'm just going to put it a bit smaller but because we put it a bit smaller, we're also going to have to adjust our size between the lines again. So we're just going to put it a bit smaller and the setting basically just changes the space between each letter. I'm just going to put it down a bit too and now align the text to the center again and that's what you want to do. Now to make the text stand out a bit more, we're going to add some effects. So to do that, select your text layer, go to the effects and presets panel and search for deep glow. Drag it onto your text layer. And now just copy my settings. We're going to start by putting the radius a bit down from 250 to approximately 180. Then we're going to put the exposure to 0 0.8. We're going to put the threshold up to 100 and also the smooth threshold up to 100. Now what's really important because as you can see there's a black barb in the background right now. We're going to go ahead and enable the required for text setting. We're just going to remove that black bar. Obviously depending on what text you want for yourself you're going to kind of want to play around with the settings a bit and make it adjust the best to your liking. Now next we're going to add a drop shadow. So we're going to go ahead and search drop shadow, drag it onto our layer and we're going to put the opacity up to 100, the distance to 10 and the softness to 8. As you can see it looks way better now and now just do the rest of your text. Now once you've done that you should have different text layers but this might be appear that your text is not centered right here because you have two lines it's always going to center the line that's a bit wider. So what we're going to do here is we're going to double our text layer by pressing Ctrl and D on our keyboard and then isolate each line. So for the top layer, we're going to delete the bottom row. And for the bottom layer, we're going to delete the top row. So both of them are isolated. And now we can just individually align them to the center and it should be fixed. Now the next step is going to be optional. Just it depends really on the situation and on what intro you're doing. But I'm going to change some words and change the color of them and change the size. For example, right here, the word that's standing out is the word cousin. So I'm just going to select the one word cousin right here. And I'm going to open my character panel again and now adjust the settings that we talked about earlier. So I'm just going to make it a bit bigger so it stands out from the other words and I'm going to change the color. I want to go for a light blue here. So I'm going to select a light blue just like that. Now, because you change the size of a certain word, you also want to go ahead and align it to the center again. I also want to put it at the end where he says I'm faster. So I'm just going to put it red because it's something really evil to say something pretty bad. So I'm going to again open a character panel, adjust the size and then put it to red, like a dark red, just like that. Now, once that's done, we now can apply the animation that we have because we don't want to have our text just appearing out of nowhere. So we're going to add an animation that makes it fade up slowly for that. I'm going to go ahead and select the first text layer go to our effects and presets panel and search for the effect called fade up words. Its name basically reveals what it does. It just fades up the words one by one. So apply it to your clip and then you can press U on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And the first keyframe is where there's zero. 
so there's no text appearing and the second keyframe is where your text is 100% completed and you want it to be fully visible. For me, my character is gonna finish talking at this exact place, so I drag the keyframe all the way over here. And if you have two or more layers, what you wanna do now is you're just gonna cut the bottom layer right at this place. So before that, we don't wanna see the bottom text. We just want it after that he's set the first row. And then we're gonna add the same preset to the second layer as well, if that makes sense. And then do the same thing that we did earlier, listen to the clip and finish it when he finished talking. Now, once we've done that, just take a final look at it and look if everything worked out. I fought your cousin once, in the future. He is fast, I'm faster. I so for me, it looks fine now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-compose all the clips. And if you have two layers for one text, you're just gonna put them in one pre-composition together. And we're gonna do that for all the text layers. Now there's two more things till we're finished our text. So first of all, we're gonna click on the layer that we just created and press T on our keyboard to bring up the opacity property. Now set a keyframe approximately eight frames before the clip ends and put the value to 100. Now go to the end of the clip and put it to zero. We're gonna now copy this preset by pressing Ctrl and C, and then apply it to all the text layers by pressing Ctrl and V. By doing that, our text won't just disappear when it's ending. It will rather just slowly fade out as you can see right here, now slowly fades out instead of just stopping. Now last but not least, because our text currently looks pretty stiff because it's just in one position, we're gonna add a scaling so, so that it slowly moves towards us and it's gonna make our edit look way better. To do that, select the current layer, press S on your keyboard to bring up the scaling property and set a keyframe at the beginning. Now we're gonna disable this little check mark, which is constraint proportions. What that basically does is you can now stretch the text individually in the width and in the height. Now go to the end of your layer and put the value from 100 up to 110. Copy these keyframes again and apply it to every text layer. So if you play our intro now, it should look way better. I fought your cousin once, in the future. He is fast, I'm faster. I so now the last thing to do is also align these clips that we put right here to our composition. So as you can see, he's not fully in the shot. So I'm just gonna move the position a bit to the left so he's fully visible and do that for all different scenes that you have. For example, here I'm gonna put it back so that it's just visible. So once we've completed that step, we can finally go to editing our clips. What I always add first is my velocity. I use Twixter to do velocity. I have a full step-by-step -step guide on how to make a smooth velocity on Twixter on my channel. It's gonna pop up in the top right corner right now. Make sure to watch it. And I'm just gonna apply the preset that I made in that video on my clips. Once you edit your velocity preset, make sure to play the edit once so you can check if everything worked fine. And because it still looks pretty stiff for a wow factor, I'm gonna add a twitch shake to my edit. I also made a full step-by-step -step guide on how to make the best twitch shakes ever. To not miss that out, make sure to check the top right corner. I linked it right there. And if you watch it, you're gonna have the best twitch shakes ever. So now I'm also gonna apply my Twitch Shake preset to the clips. After I edit my Twitch Shakes, the edit looks completely different, just like a brand new edit, it looks perfect. And if you wanna get the same presets that I use for every single edit, and you don't wanna mess around with your own settings, make sure to go on my website because you can actually get them for 70% off right now. It's a limited offer, make sure to not miss out. And yeah, once we've added our Twitch Shakes, make sure to look at it again to make sure that it didn't mess up anything. I fought your cousin once in the future. He is fast. I'm faster. As you can see, it already looks pretty dope, but what I want to do for my edit is I want to loop the clips, so make them repeat again. To do that, just go ahead and select all the clips that you just did for your edit. Not the text layers, not the intros, but just the clips. And pre-compose them together to just one composition. And now once you've done that, you can duplicate the composition by pressing Ctrl and D on your keyboard and just drag it to where the other one ends. Make sure to zoom in and make it align perfect so there's no spare frames. And now you have actually doubled your edit. But for the end, we're also going to add something because at the end, if it just pops out and there's a black screen, it's not going to look pretty good. So this is what it looks like right now. I find and to fix that, I'm actually gonna go here and make the audio fade out the same way we made it fade in at the beginning. I'm gonna make it slowly fade out. It always brings a lot of quality to your edit. So just set a keyframe where the 
last clip ends, put it to zero, and then go ahead, like, however long you want to go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead, like, I don't know, how long is this? One second. And then put it to negative 45. And now when we play it again, we have this smooth sound fade out. Listen to it. <laughs> If there's any special effects that you want to add to your edit, make sure to check my profile page because I have lots of tutorials, whether it's a logo animation that fades up or it's a ghost effect, you can find that all on my page right now. So make sure to check it out. Now the last thing that's left is basically pre-composing them all together and adding your watermark. And as you might have guessed, I also made a tutorial on how to make a perfect Luma watermark. It's in the top right corner right now and check it out to make your best Luma watermark ever. Now to give your edit the final touch and make it blow up, make sure to go back into the pre-composition that we composed earlier and add two adjustment layers. You're gonna do that by pressing Ctrl, Alt and Y on your keyboard. Press it two times for two adjustment layers and now just add the final touches. So we're gonna first of all add a panning for that search as underscore shake. Add it to the bottom adjustment layer, that's pretty important and set the amplitude to 0.2, the frequency to 3.2 and make sure to enable motion blur so it looks way smoother. Now for the color correction part, I have the best color correction that you can get for quality enhancement. Make sure to check it out on my shop right now. You can get, as I said earlier, 70% off. It's a limited offer. So if you want to buy any presets, buy them now. And I'm going to show you how much my color correction increases the quality of your edits. So as you can see, this is a clip without color correction. And now this is a clip with my glow color correction that you can only get in my shop right now. You can see it does wonders and it makes the quality look from 1080p to 8k full HD. Get it in the first link in the description. So once that's done, you're good to go. You can now render your edit and upload it to TikTok. And I hope this tutorial is going to have some positive impact on your views and your followers. If I could help you, I would gladly appreciate if you would like, subscribe and comment on this video. Also, I have a huge Discord server where I'm on 24-7. So if you have any questions regarding editing, you can join and ask me anytime. I will gladly help you. That's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.